Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sabia Gatti. I'm back into my clinical duties at St. Thomas's, but have completed a three-year cry fellowship at St. George's. And I have the pleasure of speaking on left ventricular hypertrabeculation in athletes. I have no conflicts to declare. Participating in regular exercise for at least four hours per week is associated with some st structural changes within the left ventricle. Specifically, we see a 15 to 20% increase in left ventricular wall thickness, a 6 to 10% increase in left ventricular cavity size, which results in a 40 to 50% increase in left ventricular mass. We also now know that athletes get a 10 to 14% increase in right ventricular cavity size. The general cardiac assessment of an athlete focuses on the left ventricular structure and function, and it is also common to observe the smooth cardiac contours of the left ventricular myocardium. But over the past 20 years or so, there have been technical advances in echocardiographic resolution, including tissue harmonics, that have brought more detailed attention to the myocardial structure. And here is an example of an athlete with increased trabeculations interspersed by deep recesses. Such appearances are common and frequently raise the prospect of left ventricular non-compaction. Left ventricular non-compaction um, is, uh, is thought to be due to... Uh, is, has multiple trabeculations and intrabecular recesses that communicate with the left ventricular cavity. The etiology is considered to be due to an abnormal myocardial morphogenesis. There are few anatomical correlations between the imaging anomalies we see and the actual cardiac structure. And the histology demonstrates that the, um, the, this, uh, this cardiomyopathy consists of, consists of two specific layers, an outer compacted layer and an inner non-compacted layer comprising of trabeculations and recesses. Left ventricular non-compaction is associated with complications of heart failure, predisposi predisposition to fatal cardiac arrhythmias, and the risk of thromboembolic events. There are several facts that suggest that left ventricular non-compaction is not a distinct cardiomyopathy. It is genetically very heterogeneous. It overlaps with the morphological manifestations of several distinct primary cardiomyopathies, including hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and it is also often observed as part of several metabolic cardiomyopathies and the cardiac manifestations of certain neurological diseases. There are no gold standard criteria for the assessment of left ventricular non-compaction, but there are three commonly used uh, echocardiographic criteria in existence, one by Chin, Jenny, and Stolberger. What they all have in common is the presence of a double-layered myocardial architecture comprising of an outer compacted layer and an inner non-compacted layer, and the presence of these multiple trabeculi, intertrabecular recesses that communicate with the left ventricular cavity. In addition, the CHIN criteria measure a ratio of the compacted outer layer to the non-compacted inner layer, and a ratio of less than 0.5 in diastole is considered to indicate left ventricular non-compaction. In, in contrast, the GENI criteria are assessed in systole, and they measure a ratio of the non-compacted to compacted layers of the myocardium, and if you have a ratio of more than two, it's considered to indicate left ventricular non-compaction. Stolberger are the least specific of the three criteria, and they assess for more than three trabeculations distal to the papillary muscle in any single axis plane at the apical views. There are some concerns regarding the current diagnostic criteria. They were based on small cohorts. They were not prospectively derived. They were not validated properly in patients with cardiomyopathy or those with left ventricular non-compaction. The measurements were taken in different phases of the cardiac cycle, and the sites of measurements are variable. They're oversensitive in certain populations, including the black population, and non-specific in low-risk populations, as I will present later. And based on the pediatric population, the prevalence is thought to range between 0.014% and 0.3%. And here are examples of the non-specific features of the criteria in various groups. If we take a look at patients referred for echocardiography in a normal hospital, then 2.2% fulfill features of left ventricular non-compaction. If we take a look at African Afro-Caribbean controls, from our experience, 8% exhibit increased trabeculations. Patients with a sickle cell anemia that is associated with an increased cardiac preload 8.1% fulfill features of non-compaction. And in a Southeast London heart failure clinic, where 30% of patients are black, 24% fulfill features of non-compaction. Both sickle cell anemia and heart failure are conditions in which individuals are subject to a chronic increase in 
cardiac preload. And these findings suggest that in certain populations or disease processes, increased trabeculations may be a morphological response to loading conditions rather than a specific myocardial disorder. And I will refer to this as an epiphenomenon. Before we go further, I feel it's prudent to discuss the MRI criteria for left ventricular non-compaction, which will become slightly late, uh, relevant later, in, later on in this talk. There are two main criteria, one by Peterson, who, which was described in 2005, and they assess a ratio of the non-compacted to compacted layers of the myocardium in diastole. And if you had a, a ratio of more than 2.3, this was considered to indicate left ventricular non-compaction. Jacquier described their criteria in 2010 and assessed the proportion of the trabeculated mass compared to the global left ventricular mass. And if your trabeculated mass was more than 20%, this was considered to indicate left ventricular non-compaction. Although both criteria were shown to have a high sensitivity and specificity, they were based on small cohorts. In Peterson's case, seven patients, and in Jacquier's case, 16 patients. What about athletes? Athletic training is another situation where individuals are subject to a chronic increase in cardiac preload and afterload, and it is possible that such practice leads to the appearance of increased trabeculations in this population as we see in heart failure patients. In the UK, elite athletes commonly undergo pre-participation ECG and echocardiography, and we often identify a trabeculated myocardium and worry about left ventricular non-compaction. And we see all sorts of images like these. Here is an individual with a trabeculated myocardium, both at the mid and apical level, and on, and on color flow, evidence of intertrabecular pockets. And most athletes will have the typical smooth contours of the myocardium. Some athletes will have increased trabeculations, and others fulfill the non-compaction criteria. The distinction between increased trabeculation in athletes and left ventricular non-compaction is important because although we don't have much data available on non-compaction in sportsmen, there was a recent meta-analysis that showed 18 cases reported in the literature with non-compaction. However, these were high-risk cases because 70 out of 18 had symptoms, 50% with exertional syncope, 22% with TIAs, 44% with a family history of sudden cardiac death, and 67% clearly had an abnormal ECG or tachyarrhythmias, and this would make you think of pathology rather than physiology. I'd like to share our experience of increased trabeculation in athletes. We looked at just over 1,100 athletes competing at regional, national, and international level. All underwent ECG and echocardiography as part of a pre-participation screening evaluation. The mean age of the athletes was 20.9 years. 80% were male, 80% were Caucasian, and we compared our athletes to 415 non-athletic controls recruited from the CRI population screening program. We also compared our athletes to 75 patients with an established diagnosis of left ventricular non-compaction. We defined increased trabeculations based on our sed sedentary control population and measured the mean number of trabeculations and took a, a value two standard deviations above this. This amounted to a figure of three trabeculations, which was similar to previously proposed criteria. We also used the CHIN and the Jenny definition to establish criteria for left ventricular non-compaction because they have been validated more vigorously, even though in small numbers. And this is what we found. When we just looked at increased trabeculations, then our athletes had more trabeculations than controls. Almost one-fifth of our athletes had increased trabeculations. There were no sex differences. Around one in five male or female athlete had a trabeculated myocardium. Left ventricular trabeculations were more common in black athletes compared with Caucasian athletes. Around one in three black athletes had increased trabeculations compared to around one in five Caucasian athletes. What about the criteria for non-compaction? 8.1% of our athletes fulfilled both the CHIN and the Jenny criterion for left ventricular non-compaction. And this included 11% of black athletes and 8.4% of Caucasian athletes. In contrast, none of the controls fulfilled the criteria for left ventricular non-compaction. The fact that one in 10 athletes fulfills the non-compaction criteria would make you think of an epiphenomenon rather than a disease process. When we compared our athletes fulfilling criteria to those that didn't, there was no age, sex, or ethnic predilection. 
There are no differences in body size or hours of training. There are no differences in echocardiographic parameters, including indices of diastolic function. However, athletes fulfilling the criteria did show a higher prevalence of T-wave inversion compared to those that didn't. When we compared our athletes fulfilling the criteria to patients with left ventricular non-compaction, then two-thirds of the non-compaction patients had symptoms of heart failure compared to none of the athletes. Patients with left ventricular non-compaction had uh, T-wave inversions in the infralateral leads, and patients with left ventricular non-compaction had significantly reduced ejection fractions with a mean of 46%, as well as reduced indices of systolic and diastolic function. However, this slide is slightly worrying. When we looked at our athletes who fulfilled the criteria for non-compaction, then almost 1% of our athletes fulfilling criteria had associated reduced left ventricular systolic function and marked repolarization changes. This gray zone of athletes consisted of 3.4% of black athletes compared with 0.5% of Caucasian athletes. And this is the gray zone. When we looked at all 10 athletes in the gray zone, two things came out. One, 80% of these athletes had T-wave inversion in V1 to V3, but never in the lateral leads. And two, the ejection fractions ranged from 45% to 50%, but never, never lower than 44%. Furthermore, indices of diastolic function were normal in all 10 athletes. This is a typical example of an athlete in the gray zone. We have an athlete with anterior T-wave inversion who fulfills features of non-compaction on their echo with a slightly reduced ejection fraction. When we tested all 10 athletes further, on stress echocardiography, our athletes' ejection fractions improved significantly, all demonstrated high peak VO2s, and there was no evidence of arrhythmias during exercise or on halter monitoring. When we MRI'd all 10 athletes, all fulfilled the Peterson criteria for non-compaction, and there was no evidence of gadolinium enhancement. So the question, ladies and gentlemen, is what is the significance of increased trabeculation in athletes? Our group's view is that one in ten athletes have it, and, this is in, and in the vast majority, this is likely to represent an epiphenomenon due to a chronic increase in cardiac preload. 1% of athletes may fulfill a triad of the non-compaction features with associated T-wave inversion and reduced left ventricular systolic function. And as things stand, there isn't enough data to enable the diagnosis of left ventricular non-compaction in this group. However, there are certain markers that may favor a pathological process over physiological adaptation. The presence of symptoms or a family history would favor disease. Reduced uh, longitudinal function would be of concern, as would low peak VO2s. Failure of the ejection fraction to improve on exercise echo and the observation of frequent arrhythmias during an, uh, during an exercise test. Abnormal myocardial strain patterns are still in the experimental phase for this condition, but if you did have an attenuated strain pattern or paradox, paradoxical systolic loops, that, that would make you think of a primary myocardial disease process. The presence of fibrosis as evidenced by late gadolinium enhancement on cardiac MRI, and we should go out of our way to assess first-degree relatives to look for familial inheritance patterns. Our data in athletes is based on a cross-sectional study, so it's impossible to be sure that exercise led to the development of increased trabeculations, as shown in A, or cause an exaggeration of pre-existing trabeculations, as shown in B. One way to test this hypothesis would be to subject an individual to, to an who, with a normal myocardial morphology to an increased cardiac preload and to check for the development of trabeculations. Such studies could be problematic because it would be difficult to synchronize exercise regimes in large cohorts. I'd like to finish by showing you a couple of slides to test the first hypothesis. We used a pregnancy model to test the first hypothesis. <coughs> pregnancy is associated with the doubling of the blood vol volume and an increase in cardiac output, which peaks around 28 to 32 weeks gestation. We performed a prospective longitudinal study in 102 premi-gravida pregnant women with a mean age of 30.7 years. 66 women were Caucasian and 36 women were black. 
we performed ECG and echocardiography in the first trimester, the third trimester, and up to 12 months postpartum in each woman. Any women with more than three trabeculations was excluded from this study, as were those with cardiac structural abnormalities. And this is what we found. 25% of women developed trabeculations in their third trimester. This was more common in black women compared with Caucasian women. Around one in three black women had developed trabeculations compared to one in five Caucasian women. And once again, a high proportion fulfilled the non-compaction criteria. In the postpartum period, 72% of these women showed regression of this myocardial morphology at a mean follow-up of 8.1 months. 28% continued to show some trabeculations and have, and have remained under a slightly longer follow-up period. None of the women that developed trabeculations showed abnormal indices of systolic or diastolic function. And the results of this study suggest that increased trabeculations in the majority of individuals at low risk are a benign myocardial response to increased loading conditions. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, left, diagnostic criteria for left ventricular non-compaction are based on small cohorts and have not been validated properly. They lack specificity in many, in, including athletes. Almost 10% of our athletes fulfilled the non-compaction criteria, suggesting that more specific criteria are required. Around 1% of our athletes exhibited a triad of the non-compaction features, depressed left ventricular systolic function, and marked repolarization changes. And based on the pregnancy study, it is likely that increased trabeculations are likely to represent an epiphenomenon outside the context of familial heart failure. However, multicenter studies are required to replicate our results. And we would also emphasize screening first-degree relatives to check for familial inheritance patterns. Thank you very much.